Are we here? Is it happening? All right, it's happening. Oh, exactly 901. I, I timed that pretty good. And look at this. Well, the mic should be crisp. It's a $7,000 AKG microphone that like real studios use to record vocals, but I just use it as a stupid streamer. Uh, but look at this. We got, we got chat working. Last time, the uh, not only did the voice not work on here, but I don't think that the chat was showing up. And now it's showing up. How tight is that? Is that better than a U87? Let me go check. Um... Wait, what audio didn't come through quite right? Did I do this wrong again? Um, okay. So this mic is a, uh, oh God, what's it called? It's an AKG C12 VR if you want to Google it. Wait, the mono channel was super weak compared to the sides. Are you talking about when I was playing music or when I was talking? Really? Are you sure that wasn't you? Because I feel like I watched the stream back and it was okay. But it could also be the way that I have the stream set up. Because obviously I have like a, a PC tower running the stream and then... I have my Go XLR, which is running my mic and all the like stream stuff. And then I have all the audio from my Mac running through an eighth inch cable into the Go XLR. Um, so I wonder if it's the cable that I'm using, but uh, I don't know. We're going to find out. Thanks for the bits, my dudes. Well, yeah, the microphone sounds great. We haven't got into the music part yet. Um, love your set of Tomorrowland weekend one, despite being, oh man, God, that, that day sucked so much. Uh, I had a lot of fun in Tomorrowland this year, but yeah, that was one of the worst days of touring I've had in a really long time. Uh, yeah, it sucked, but it was worth it. Uh, okay. Okay. So, I mean, why don't we just get into it? Uh, okay. So we're talking about microphones real quick, right? So this is the microphone that someone asked if it was better than the one that I have. This is a Neumann U87. I mean, it's like one of the most classic mics. What I'm working with is an AKG C12 VR. These things are insane. Um... It's, it's way too much for anyone to ever... I mean, I I got this thing as an investment. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not just for me uh, streaming. Uh, this is like a microphone I'll get to keep for the rest of my life. Um, but for now, it's going to be a, uh, a glorified stream mic. And it sounds really good. And then... I can do this. And I sound so tight. <laughs> Welcome to Demo Roulette. When are we doing the q and I have a question I've been meaning to ask some of the Icon alumni. Go ahead. Ask, ask away. We can we can do some uh go back here. We can do some uh Q and A real quick while I get all this shit set up stuff. Argentina. Oh, God. I don't. Oh wow. I did not mean to do that. 
Argentina. Have I not been to Argentina? I feel like I have. Uh, shout out for the Twitch Prime, Thesmeath. I'm really hoping hoping that's that's how you say that. Oh, birthday party with the serious question. How was your day? <laughs> you <got> it. <laughs> it was great, thanks. Um, do I have any upcoming shows in New Zealand? Yeah, I do. I'm playing Rhythm and Vines on New Year's, like on December thirty first. I'm I've been waiting to play that festival forever. I'm super excited about it. Craig, Craig, ha ha, Craig. Mini lads in the building. Craig, when are you gonna come on stream and do a uh, demo roulette with me? Whenever you're in LA next, I know I know you're here soon. We'll uh, we'll get you in the studio and you can help me. I'm in LA for five days next week. Oh my God. Okay, here we go. Here's the question about Icon. Some people have told me things like, don't go to Icon because number one is $25,000. And number two, people think that those that come out of Icon are paying their way into the industry. How can someone tell you that you're paying your way into the industry if you're going to school? No one tells you that you're paying your way into the industry if you go to business school and you get a master's in business, you know what I mean? I, I think that's, that's a total, that's a lie. Um, is icon expensive? Yeah. Is it as expensive as it would have been if I had gone to real college for more than one year? No. Um, I mean, I took out tons of student loans cause I was going to real college and luckily I only had to pay for a full year of them cause I only went to school for a year. Um, and I'll tell you, my entire tuition at Icon was like a semester of college, like one semester. And I mean, I got to pay off all my debts for Icon and real school like a long time ago. So, and that wouldn't have happened if I had stayed all the way through college. So, I mean... I mean, obviously that, that experience doesn't happen for everyone, but I mean, Icon is a big reason why I'm here. It's also a big reason why I'm sitting here, you know, doing something like Demo Roulette, trying to uh, give back and, you know, teach people uh, because, you know, going to Icon and doing all of that uh, allowed me to learn so much. Uh, do I have any pictures of my studio in Reach? No. Is this my main production studio? Can you do a tour? <laughs> I mean, you're basically looking at it. Like, there's, like, some keyboards right here. And then, like, my desk is right here. And I have two four-inch monitors that are about this big. And uh, that's, that's literally it. Um, yeah, I have, like, four keyboards and a studio desk that has, like, you know, my sound card. And, uh, you know, a couple hard drives and my MacBook. But there's nothing exciting in this studio at all. Um, and that should be a lesson, which is that you don't need a bunch of cool stuff to make good music. Not that I make good music, but whatever. Uh, what are your thoughts on room acoustics? Good monitors. Okay, back to what I was just saying. Uh, I mean, if you, I know you can't see that much. Uh... But I have no sound treatment in here at all. Literally at all. Um, again, I have tiny 4-inch monitors that are like right in front of my face. Um, I don't even have a sub. Uh, and I mean, I mix a lot of stuff on my headphones too. So, I mean, you can spend all the money you want on studio treatment and all that stuff. And I'm sure when I get like a real house, I'll, I'll go crazy with it. But... Um, at the same time, you don't need it at all. Do I even need a sub? I have normal... Okay, so four-inch monitors. Um, the one problem with them is that their low-end cutoff is at 40 hertz. And a lot of, you know, if you're writing in the keys of, you know, anywhere from D 
E, F, whatever, um, a lot of your low end is going to be lower than 40 hertz. So I have to use headphones to mix my low end a lot. Uh, congrats on getting into Icon, Sele. Uh, do I think Bass House is dying as a genre? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I never really thought that Bass House as a genre was really a thing. I was just making music, and I guess I got lucky. Um, and that's also why I've always wanted to make all kinds of music, because I never wanted to get stuck in one genre and get pigeonholed, and then all of a sudden, you know, that genre is dying, and then I'm out of a job. Uh, I also don't like just one kind of music. So, yeah. Uh, which headphones am I using for mixing my tracks? These ones. Can you see them? Pioneer DJ. I want to say they're HDJ25s. I don't know. Let me figure it out. HDJ5. Mm. Pioneer H... DJ five, is that it? Nope, that's not it. Oh, Jeebus. Give me a sec. How do I not remember what these are called? I have them on my head every single day of my life. HDJ, oh yeah, HRM six are these. They are these guys. Um, I mean, obviously, I DJ on Pioneer CDJs, um, and I DJ with Pioneer headphones. I use these guys. Uh, what are they called? The HDJ S7s. They're tiny and really easy to pack and sound really good. And then I've been using for the last three, four years... I think these guys, they're not even the top of the line, uh, like producing headphones from Pioneer, but I just love them so much. And everyone, I have like 10 pairs of them and I'll give them to people every now and then. And they always end up using them too. Uh, and they're only 169 bucks. So it's not like you need like $5,000 headphones to be able to mix a song. It's all about what you're comfortable with. Uh, you know what? We should probably get into Demo Roulette. So, let's see. Compared to last week, we have 45 submissions. And I think we had 33 last time, so that's a pretty uh, substantial growth. And this time, I don't need Twitch or chat or Discord chat to help me, because you just Google random number generator and it happens. So, 45, right? Oh, there's a spinner? Will that work? Wait. Nope, that only goes to 10. Damn it. That would be way cooler. Uh, 20 numbers. You can't do 45? Come on. All right. 44. 22. All right, that's the one. I feel like we did 21 last time. Oh, right. Okay. So I decided last week that uh, I'm only going to do demo roulette with people who are currently in the chat so that you guys have to uh, hang out in the chat. So I'm really hoping that there are some of you guys in here who have uh, submitted. So what's 21? Wait, or is it 22? 22. Okay. Flick X locked. Dakota T. Oh, oh my God. Okay. I need to put the emails over here so that you guys can't see them. Flick X locked. You out there? Uh, I was just wondering what the connection between Bite This and Mouse Chat. Notice there's a bunch of artists on each label. Io, well, Io has been one of my friends for seven years. So, and he's you know, Mouse Trap's new prodigy kid. 
Uh, and then the rest of them are just demos that I get sent in. So they probably, they probably, uh, sent in demos to me and to Mousetrap and we both like them cause they're all good musicians or good producers. All right, cool. Flicked X locked are here. It's happening. So let's see if I can make this thing scroll. I got Serum, Kickstart, Wider, everything else, eight stock Ableton. All right, cool. And then, oh my gosh. Overall song structure, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Whatever. I don't need to read that. Let's download this bad boy. Thank you for making it a zip. So it'll download in like two seconds flat, hopefully. Oh no, it looks like it's going to take a while. All right, question time then. As sad as it is to say this, I haven't heard any of your music at all. Can you tell me real quick the type of genres you produce most? Well, thanks for coming to the stream, even though you don't know who I am at all. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I make everything. I guess people would say that I'm a quote-unquote bass house artist, but I don't like being called that at all i actually hate it um but i make i mean i make house music i make dubstep i've made drum and bass melodic stuff trap stuff like literally everything um do i have my old pairs of soul republic headphones yes i have so many of them like so many uh how's the label coming along it's awesome i mean we have a release or two every single week it's actually getting kind of crazy are these headphones comfortable to wear? That's why I chose to stream in them because, I mean, I literally wear them for like 10 hours at a time. Uh, they get a little hot because they're closed. They're not open. Um, but they're not like that. Like a lot of headphones have that like super soft, like fuzzy material on the ears, which is supposed to be more comfortable. But that stuff gets so hot so fast. Um, and this is like a leather kind of stuff. I like it a lot better. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm just going to get into this project. There's too much going on in the chat right now. By the way, I should point out and also look at... Oh my gosh. Y'all should be in here. In the demo roulette chat on discord if you don't know what demo roulette is all of the rules and everything is here in the fight this discord which should be right below the stream right now if you go click on uh discord uh but okay i just downloaded that project and i'm just gonna open it up from here i guess it looks like everything is uh control or uh collected and saved this song is called Bet. Bet. <clears throat> Headphone giveaway? I mean, all right. We could. Not mad at it. Not right now, though. Maybe, uh, maybe Jared will come over and, uh, give away some of my headphones instead of giving away all of his damn computers. Noise you hi-hat loop. Did he make a sample pack? I need to download that. All right. Uh, 128 BPM, but it looks like there's a tempo change in here. Uh, everything is organized pretty good. Uh, I like how everything is labeled. Everything is frozen real nice. So beginning kick, kick, a group for percussions, trap drums. So does that mean this is going to speed up to 150? Or where where is the... Where's the tempo change? Goes up to 140. Wow, I haven't seen 140 in a long time. All right, let's just uh, let's listen through. Is there anything on the master that's going to go crazy? Nothing on the master. All right. Yo, birthday party boys, you have to let me know if the music sounds good. 
like the the quality of the feed coming in I definitely know this uh, vocal sample. I mean, so far, like the mix sounds really good, especially for not having a master on it. The, all the sounds sound clean. Like the structure is professional. I'm not really hearing anything I don't like so far from like a, like an objective mix standpoint. And this is where it's gonna tempo change, I think. Yeah. It's about to get crazy. I really like okay so we 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 got the idea right so it's like a you know pretty uh I don't want to say standard cuz I hate when people say that but I mean we got like a if you want to call it a bass house drop here nice little vocal intro melody everything sounds you know like you know what you guys are doing I mean, everything sounds good. This is a perfect example of uh, what I was saying last week, which is if you find a drum loop that you really like and it sounds good and it fits good in your kit or in your in your song, don't try to remake it. Just use it because you're never gonna make it sound that good and. And no one's going to know that you're using a loop for your drums. And also, who cares? Um, and you have, a, you have a ghost kick for your side chains. So you're good. Like, who cares? Right? Um, I like that kick a lot. I don't know if that's what you're using in the drop. Of course, it's a noise you kick. Man, I, oh, I got I to gotta go steal a sample pack. Because I was literally trying to figure out how he makes his kick so pillowy and good like that. And the way that you side-chained everything super heavy to it is, it sounds really nice. Yeah, I wish I would have found out that Noiju has a bunch of his kicks on the internet. Uh, four hours ago when I was trying to finish this song and I realized that the kick in it sucked and I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't make a better one uh, I mean okay so what do what do I do how am I gonna take this to the next level right um wait has birthday party said anything about the the sound quality mm -mm -mm. Yeah, music could come up a little bit, but that's really it. Much better than last week. All right, cool. Well, the music is like it's it's literally turned up as. Hmm. Actually, I could turn it up a little bit more.
I think that worked. Let's find out. That's way louder, right? That's definitely way louder. Yes. That worked. What else do I have? Oh, wow. What's this? Soldier 76. Reporting for duty. Anyways. Um, all right. This is crazy loud for me. Uh, eh, whatever. It's not like I don't listen to music loud all the time anyways. I don't need my ears, do I? Standard or solid, I should say. I mean, it all sounds good. I mean, now, okay, so objectively, I looked over everything. The mix sounds good. The structure is good. Um, you know, like it, it feels like it could be a finished song more or less, but now I have to look at it subjectively, which is would I like this as my song? Whoa. All the sub is coming from inside the synth. That's pretty impressive. Um, okay, one thing that you are doing here just on a technical side that you could definitely be doing much more simply is you just put one Kickstarter on your group and then everything gets sidechained the same instead of having a sidechain on every single thing. Uh, but I can't believe... And I like how you resampled this. That's cool. It's all cool. It all sounds good. Um, I also use Volume Shaper Shao. The Volume Shaper is the best. You can use whatever you want, but I personally like Volume Shaper is my my jam. Um, I want to see if I can make this synth sound cooler. I'm I'm a real stickler when it comes to like the the feel and like tonality of a synth and I, this one just isn't my favorite. It sounds really big and massive and gnarly and especially I can't believe that all the sub is in there and you're not like saturating the crap out of it. Ha <laughs> ha. It's just a crazy wavetable. Now, this is one of the real, um, this is one of the real, uh, what am I trying to say? One of the real, like, underused, you know, secrets, I guess, of Serum is that you can just put in a weight, uh, uh, a wave, wave table, wave, wave table, both, either one is the same. Like, you could just put a sample in here and just play it and like use all the effects and everything because all a wavetable is is just a sample so you could put any kind of sample in here and just go nuts um okay and then this is just controlling the wavetable position so one thing that you could do that would be cool is um put a macro on here so that so it's like eight bars is like and then the next eight bars you just drag the macro down and it sounds totally different you know what i mean uh let's see what happens I mean, yeah, if I'm not going to go in and like make a new wavetable and do something crazy, because like all the motion and everything going on in this sound really is just that wavetable. Um, I feel like this is probably something that someone would call cheating because you're just like, oh man, you're just using a wavetable. But like, who cares? If it sounds good, like 
you're doing great like whatever and like i would have never thought to use an lfo like this to control the wavetable and it's like you're almost using it like a uh uh what's it called like a stepper in massive if you guys ever used massive or still use massive um where it was like the stepper was like this you know so it's the lfo set on a bar so that's one two three four one two three four um so it's is that really a bar okay i see so every two of these is one beat so i guess this is what fourths eighths i don't know i'm bad at math but like instead of using it as just like one wave and having it go over and over again which is what i did or what i always do you're using it like the stepper and massive and like actually making it do stuff over an extended period of time which is pretty cool And it's even modulating this cutoff. Now, what I might do is uh, go in here into one of these like multis. Mm. Not that one, maybe one of these. I just want something to like, to like, you know, just make the sound like feel a little bit more filtered and like just even like letting that thing run around the more if can get it to like not just be so aggressive and give it some really cool movement Oh God, I'm gonna... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, like just adding a little filter like that, like a random filter and just... Like that already sounds kind of... Oh, I'm gonna have to put it... Okay, cool. So I'll show you guys Volume Shaper now because... I deleted his sidechain. Shaper box. I got that new Shaper box too, but I'm not going to use that yet because you guys probably aren't allowed to see it yet. But just know it's coming. And if you use Shaper box, you'll know how much you love this. And Shaper box two is just bigger and better. Um. So yeah, Shaper box is just like any other side chain. Um. I just like it because it's multi band which I don't really use that much, but it's nice to have. And I really like how it sounds, um, especially when you... Um, so, okay. If you use Ableton and you use something like Shaperbox or LFO Tool or, uh, you know, any, any uh, side-chaining plugin other than, you know, the stock compressor against your kick, you probably notice that sometimes it feels a little off. And that's because if you don't uh, use a MIDI trigger... It can be uh, a little bit off time. It's just something that Ableton does and you just have to work around it and it's okay. You'll survive. Um, so all I'm really gonna do is I have this extra MIDI channel right here, right? And I'm gonna click in right there. And then um, I'm going to take the MIDI information from the kick, right? And I'm going to do pre-effects. Okay, cool. It's frozen, so I can't do that. Forget I said anything. Um, and then I'm going to send the output to the main drop group. And then from there, it's on Shaper Box. So now you're sending a signal every time the kick triggers to trigger Shaper Box. So now I go in here and go to MIDI one shot. So that means that every time whatever MIDI signal you're sending hits a note, it will trigger the uh side chain but it won't trigger the side chain if there is no kick information so that's it makes it really easy to like take a kick out and then you're not going to get that like side chain motion if there's not supposed to be a kick there um the one caveat with that to use a college word 
um, is that if you have this white dot right here, if you have this going down and you have it on one shot and there's not a kick to trigger it again, it's going to go to zero volume and stop. So if you want the sound to play all the way through, you have to make sure that this white dot right here is all the way at the very, very end, which means that when the envelope of the shaper box ends, the volume of the synth that you're controlling is at full volume and not at zero volume. Because if you have it over here and you're on one shot, it literally runs through this envelope one time and then is done. So if you have this thing even a little bit just like that, it's going to go all the way through it and then it's going to go down. And right here is zero dB, zero volume. So obviously when it's done playing and it goes down, you're not going to hear anything, but you probably don't want that. So just make sure that this little white dot is always in the top right corner and you'll be happy. I promise. Um, loop length, I should probably set to a quarter because we're doing house music for this part of the song. Um, and so the kick is going to be on the quarter of, uh, every bar quarter notes. And if I did everything right, this thing should side chain. Oh, Jesus. Oh, right. What did I do wrong? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Well, cause there's a ghost over here somewhere. Oh, but that's just for the, for the, okay. So I'm just going to copy all of this kick information and put it on the ghost down here. Cause I can do that. And then if I change this to ghost kick, then it should work. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So let's get back into this. Uh, where is this? It's really funny how simple something like just dragging this shelf up really makes the sound sound like you did some crazy processing to it because if you have that down here at, at level it just feels like something's missing from the sound but you just do this and all of a sudden it sounds like this big crazy synth uh i guess that's a lesson to not overthink things because i do that all the time I wish this was doing more. Whoa. Too much. I wanted it to do a lot, but that was too much. Let's see what we got going on in here. What? Oh, okay. So you're using this as like the LFO trigger. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't use that flanger either. Interesting. That's still blowing my mind that all the low end is just coming from there. Because I would always make a dedicated sub. Um, but I guess if, like, you're, you're really only doing the processing inside of Serum. And then you set your sub to direct out, which means it's not getting affected by any of this. You know, the hyper or the EQ or the compressor or any of that stuff. So, I mean, you're good. 
you've probably watched way more tutorials by Virtual Riot than I have, because this looks like something he would do. That's pretty crazy. You know, I really hate these, uh, the four bar pre-drops, uh, that have become so, so common, or I guess it's two bar, sorry. Uh, but the, the, the pre-drops without the bass or the, or the, or the kick or the drums, um, and it's not just in house music or bass house, if you want to call it that it, it's super popular in dubstep, especially right now. And it's like, uh, I hate it cause it works so well you know what i mean like everyone's doing it but still every time you hear a song in the first two bars there's no drums and then they come in it just hits so good so like i can't knock it um Mmm, where are the drums? The one thing I will say is that the percussion feels super high endy, and then the synth is super high endy, and it's just like a lot. And there's also a ton of low end in some of this. Yeah, that works. Nice clap. What a dick. Noise use samples are so good. Okay, so rule of thumb, when you have the tops of your drums, I've seen people EQ way more than this. Also, by the way, if you're going to auto filter anything, uh, you know, where it's like the drums are filtering in or out, always put that at the end of all of your processing. Otherwise, you might get some stuff that sounds weird. Um, I'm going to take this down. And then I'm going to put... A big old low cut at like 600. Okay, so the, the clap is like right around 450. You notice how the only thing that happens when I turn off the filter is you just, if you're wearing headphones, you like can feel the hi hats like hitting your face. You really don't need that, and it's just going to clutter up the mix. So. Yeah, those are still a little aggressive, but. But I guess it was, you were doing all of that because the synth is so loud, so you're just trying to make it like pop through the mix, which I get. But like the only hat you're even hearing really is these. Like if I turn that off. Yeah, you could, so what I would probably do is just a little bit of subtractive EQing on the synth because there is so much information going on in there. So let's find like the sweet spot of this group of hats, right? That sounds pretty good. So I would say those two nodes are like a pretty good sweet spot for the hats, but I'm not going to leave that like that. I'm going to go over here to this group of goodness, and I'm going to, so I boosted those 
on the hats because it sounded good there and i wanted to find out where it sounded good and if you were really smart you would have used this uh solo feature to really find the sweet spot but i'm i'm just trying to do this quick the important part is that you hit this scale button and you just drag this down into a negative percentage and now you're eqing those frequencies that you need to hear from the hats out of the synths so first let's make sure that that doesn't make the synths sound like doo-doo I mean, you're not missing a ton. And if I did this right, you should be able to hear the hats way better now. You notice how when I turn off that EQ, the, the synths completely disappear? I mean, they're, they're still pretty tucked back there, even with that EQ on. And I don't want to take all of those frequencies out of that main synth. So maybe what I will do is I'll go put this one back on the perk group and I'll turn it up like a little bit. And hopefully that should be enough. Yeah, you can hear them pop through. And that's like, honestly, like the only thing you need to know about mixing to make stuff work is like i can't hear this so i'm going to take away from whatever has so much information in it that if i scoop some out it's going to be okay because like this synth has so much going on and ugh, i got rid of it i'm a dummy uh let's go back here Let's actually copy it this time instead of just dragging and dropping. Or wait, did I put it on the whole group? Probably a big, yep, okay, there I am. So like, if I just play this by itself, does it sound like I cut out a bunch of frequencies? Because to me, it really doesn't. I mean, if I turn it off, it's like, yeah, okay, it's louder. But like, it's not about how it sounds on its own. It's about how it sounds in the mix of the song. So let's just like, let's, let's give it a little, you know. Like it takes away a little bit of volume. Sure. But like this, the synth is so loud anyways, that it like really doesn't matter. Um, and now you can actually hear the hats which is nice because that's your group uh, and and hats are nice and be nice to your your hats <clears throat> is everyone talking about techno in the chat again we're we talking about Grizztronics as a techno track there's a lot of stuff going on in here Uh, let's see what the peanut gallery says. I feel like the drum fill before the drop could sound better. Honestly, I think it sounds uh, pretty decent. Let's go back to it. Yeah, okay. I get that. That is another culprit of needing a hefty dose of low cut. So let's just do this. Oh, so much better. I'm not really mad at that. Um, yeah, okay. This, yeah, okay. So this could probably use a little bit of spice. Uh, let's see, what's the key of this? I'm gonna guess F. C sharp? What? No way. Well, it's a C minor vocal pitched up one. So that would be C sharp.
That could be a song on its own. That could be like a zoo track or something. That's tight. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. What was I doing? I'm gonna go look for fills or something. Samples. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, where would it be in here? Drums, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's just click C sharp and see what happens. That's actually pretty sick. I wonder if I drag that into the buildup, if that would sound crazy. So like, just make this thing go all the way, drag it down. It's kind of tight. Then maybe put like a big reverb on it. Sounds like it should be in a basement. So I guess I just need something to go on top of that guy. Uh, uh, percussion maybe? Let's see if I have any tuned percussion. Just that. Great. Um, or I could just be really lazy and just type in fill. That was a great fill. That was actually really sick. All the electric mana stuff is really sick. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, that's just a whole, a whole ass buildup. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Whoa. That was sick. I mean, okay, let's just see if this one works. I normally use fills that sound like this, but I have a feeling it's not going to be the one. It's not horrible. I'll leave that there for now but i want to find like a little vocal hit let's see what i got in c minor break the chains in your mind like this why do I have so many samples in C sharp? Wait, where was that? They said be careful, but I never played. Let hey. 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 I mean, maybe? Hey. Nope. That's going to take a lot of work. To sound good. Uh, honestly, I'm not going to lie. Phil's 
are probably my least favorite of all the things. Ooh. I mean, maybe just this. Nope, that's what a dumb idiot would do. Okay, cool. So you basically did what I was already suggesting you do. Where you change the tone of it by just moving the, the wavetable. That one also has some good movement. So, just to see if I've totally ruined this or not. What I just did is I hit Apple K. And that opens up your key mappings. And then I, I key bound uh, the original synth that these guys had made. And the new one that I, I tweaked. And I mapped them both to uh, number one on my keyboard. And one of them is off and one of them is on right now. So if I hit one, one will turn off and one will turn on at the same time. So it's a really easy way to A, B stuff that you're working on in your songs. I literally, like, at the end of a song, I'll have number one through nine normally all mapped to different things that I can switch on and off. Uh, to see if they're really working or not. And that could be, you know, different versions of a synth. If, like, I'm trying to see if a plugin that I added really, you know, added something or didn't add something. Um, uh, referencing with another song. Uh, like, when you're trying to finish your mix down and you put in a song that you know you like the mix on. Uh, you bring it in and then you turn off the channel. Um, but you you set a key binding for the solo button so that when you hit it it just automatically solos whatever track you're you're trying to reference and it makes your life way easy uh but anyways let's let's listen through this and i'm just going to turn on and off the old synth and the new synth and see which one actually sounds better Um, I think mine has a little bit more movement. It has that like crazy like f phase sound almost. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. That has some like really dirty, like low pitched white noise on it. But in the mix, it sounds all right. I like this. Um, I will say one thing, which is that adding high end to everything does not make everything sound better. Um, I mean, it does in the moment, but then, uh, you know, when you get to actually 
finishing the song, mastering it, putting it out. Um, way too much high end will just make people's ears bleed. And uh, they you won't be able to play it too loud because it'll be so bright that people will just like, if you play it on a system or something, people will just be like, <clears throat> and then their ears will explode. And you don't want that. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you're using all these sends and stuff. All right, this is tight. This is like, a, it's called like Brooklyn, Brooklyn compression, basically, where you have a send um, and you're just sending all your drums to it and you just smash the crap out of them, which is what you're doing with this OTT. And then you send a little bit of that information into your mix and it just makes your drums sound better. And I'm glad that you rolled off a little bit of the low end. Um, I mean, you could do that. You could do this on the actual sound if you really wanted to. Um, that's what I would do, but I'm also just lazy. Uh, you definitely don't have to listen to me. Um, you could keep it on a send. I just like, I feel like sends get super messy. Uh, I just don't like them, but that's just me. Also, oddly enough, the, the vocals sit pretty decently in the mix, even though I really don't like interesting. Just for good measure, I'm going to EQ this reverb just to make everything feel nice. So I'm going to do mid side EQing on this, which if you don't know what that is, this mid section means that it's everything that's mono and literally in the middle of the mix if you're listening in headphones it's like or on speakers or whatever it's what's literally right here in between your eyes and then the side is going to be everything that's over here because a lot of times uh something feels weird and it has like rumbly low end but it's really uh the side low end that's really messing with your ears it's not the middle you know, all the all the low end in the track should be more or less in the center in the mono part of your mix, and then leave uh, the the sides for like the high stuff. And I won't get into you know the scientific explanation of why, but that's just the way the world is. And you can listen to me, or you don't have to. That's totally fine. So what I'm doing right now on this EQ is I'm hitting this solo button, so you're only hearing what I'm dragging through frequency wise. And if you're wearing headphones or you're listening on something that isn't laptop speakers or even maybe on laptop speakers now, you'll be able to tell the difference between, you know, mono and stereo or, or side, mid and side. So this is the side information. Notice there's like nothing in the, in the low end on the stereo just because I mean it's an already made sample vocal so they would have already cut most of that stuff out but still like even around you know like 100 hertz to 300 hertz can get kind of muddy in the sides and you don't really need it so I'm going to leave it like right there and then you can hear this is right down the center That's, that would actually be kind of tight. That actually sounds really cool. Okay. 
So you you can't tell much of a difference there, but it just basically what I was just doing is just leaving all the room in the low end for the sub and the base so that there's no other information that it's trying to fight with so that it's just a lot easier to have a good clean sounding sub which to be fair this song already does but i'm just doing my part And then, you know, I was going to unfreeze this and take off the overdrive. But it actually sounds not bad in the mix. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just go in with this EQ. And uh, again, if you're going to have an auto filter, make sure it's at the end of your chain. Um, I'm just going to go in and, and find some horrible frequencies and take them out so that this vocal just feels a little bit less harsh. Uh, this is going to be really fun for you guys. And trust me, it's just as fun for me. But this is probably the most important thing that you could do uh, for your song, for any sound. Literally, if you did this to every single sound in your mix, you would be shocked how much better everything sounds. And it's like, I'm not doing wide, giant EQs like this, right? I'm talking like tiny. See how small that is? But like, you do a bunch of those... And you take out the really horrible, horrible frequencies and like everything just sounds better magically. It's crazy. See, okay, this is why I hate sends. Because right now I'm trying to dial in on a horrible frequency, but the reverb send is still playing because the vocals are soloed. So I'm hearing the completely unsoloed reverb I'm just going to turn it off. That's why I stopped using sends. What? Delay too? What about now? There we go. You hear that? That's the sound of pain. And we're going to take that pain away. So if you have a normal EQ, like on Ableton, you could do that with, with this EQ with no problem like i could go in and do it with this right here you know and you can, you can find those horrible frequencies and cut them out um but i like this one because of what i'm about to show you oh Yeah, that's painful. So instead of just cutting it like that on this EQ, what's beautiful is if you see this top part right here, I'm highlighting it. It says band one dynamic range. So if I drag this down like that, it'll only EQ that frequency when it hits. So I'm not going to ruin the sound when it's not hitting that bad frequency, but when it does, it'll duck. So check this out. See how the, the yellow band, like if I just do a normal EQ cut right here, right? You see how it's, the whole band is yellow, which means that all of those frequencies are gone forever. But over here, it's like this green neon. And only this thick yellow line comes down when that frequency hits, which to be fair with this sound is all the time. But still... You're just, you know, this is a really simple way of making sure you're not actually messing up a sound and you can still do some pretty heavy EQing. Oh my goodness. Let's do that. I'm sure there's going to be some horrible ones over here. That, that hurts my insides. I mean, I could be crazy, but it sounds a little bit cleaner to me. Oh, God.
So the one problem that you can run into doing this is that you run into something like this. And you notice how it's really loud and sharp, but it's not necessarily painful. That's because what I'm finding right here is, is a, uh, a harmonic. So whatever the, the, the fundamental frequency of this vocal is, you know, C sharp, I'm probably hovering over either a C sharp right now or like a fifth or a seventh of a C sharp. It's something that is adding to the actual, you know, pleasant musical sound of the vocal. So if I cut it out, it could actually make the vocal sound worse. Um, I have a feeling it won't though, but we're going to find out. And that's kind of just a guessing game. You know, let's say I do this and I play it back and it actually sounds less powerful. I'll just turn it off and then that's fine. I can't really tell a difference. I'm going to leave it. Okay. But then I find something like this where it's an actual horrible frequency. So I'm going to take that one instead of this one. So I'm going to turn that one off. And then do this one. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. Goodbye. And I feel like it sounds better now. And just again, I'm gonna clean up some of that low end. You basically want to scoop out all the low end until you can start noticing it in the vocal, right? So I'm just going to drag it until you can noticeably tell that something is missing. And then I'll just drag it back until you can. So like right there, you can start to feel it get like tinny and thin. And then right when I passed like 147, 148, all the life came back into it. So I'm just going to leave it there. And then I actually almost feel like this sounds like you can hear it more in the mix now, but a lot of times when you do EQing like this, it can turn the overall volume of the sound down. So an easy way to fix that is you just hit this A and that's going to turn it up for as much as uh, it's going to auto gain. If auto gain is enabled, Pro-Q automatically compensates for increase or loss of gain after EQing. Note that the applied makeup gain is an educated guess based on the current EQ settings and not a dynamic process. So that means even though my EQs are dynamic, the auto gain isn't going to be dynamic. It's just going to happen once. So it'll probably make it a little bit louder than it needs to be, but let's see what happens. Um, I think this drop is cool. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've heard it done before. It's not the most unique drop I've heard, but I think it's done well. However, this needs to change. Yeah, so we just need like this. A 
I like how you half timed the vocal because you half timed the song. That's pretty cool. That's really cool too, doing that huge reverb swell into nothing. That's like the most satisfying feeling of just like wide, 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 wide into nothing. Great. And on this one, you did use a dedicated sub, which makes sense. I want to try to redo this, but in my own way, and see if it ends up being cooler or worse. So right now it's a sub with distortion. That makes sense. And white noise. So this is basically exactly what I'm going to do, but in my own special way. And maybe mine will sound better, but probably it'll sound worse because I'm just trying to overcomplicate things. But I will say one of my favorite sounds on the planet is a clean erosion high end on a sub and then you just destroy it. So if you've ever used trash before, it's a really, really scary, confusing, uh, overcomplicated distortion, but it's also one of my favorites. If you want to start off easy, don't bother with distort or drive or any of the things that make sense. Go to fuzz and go to smooth and then work up from there. I mean, they basically sound identical. But this needs to be filtered. I just felt like I needed a little bit more something. Let's do the AB thing again. This time I'm going to use key number two. That's interesting. They almost sound like different notes. You notice how mine sounds like it's almost like a... Wait. Oh my god, I did it with the wrong things. I'm so dumb. No wonder it sounded wrong. Interesting, using volume automation along with the sidechain. Oh, I see. For the snare? Even though you didn't do it again. Let 
mean, if you're gonna do it, you might as well just do it on every snare, right? So I guess this is really a matter of opinion because you could like the softer saw feeling with this or you might like the more aggressive. Mine is also just way louder. I should probably turn it down. What? I don't even see where that is in the chat. Okay, back to back to what I was doing. I personally feel like the thinner, like edgier saws probably. I, I kind of like that better, but I could be crazy. Especially because this one still has a lot of low end in it that it definitely doesn't need to because of this guy. I think it's time Jaws hired a real mod. Yeah, it probably is. We'll we'll get there. What I don't understand is why the messages that are coming through my headphones don't also come through on chat. Is that not a thing? Am I crazy? Um, am I close with Joyride? Been anticipating his new album. So have I. Um, I love Johnny. My little brother Nate is his videographer and tour manager. Has been for a long time. I think they're in Europe or Asia or something right now. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's just such a perfectionist. Like his album is not going to come out until he's happy with it. We need a Jaws and Joyride collab ASAP. Well... Tell Johnny to finish his album and then we can make it happen. Um, A, B thing one more time. Okay. So I hit Apple K, right? Or I guess if you're on Windows, it's Control K. And that brings up this screen right here. Key mappings. And then I bound by just clicking right here. See where it says Key 2, 32 Serum Mixer, Speaker On and then 33 serum mixer speaker on. So when I hit the number two, it's gonna trigger both of those things at the same time. So that if you watch right here, real close, boom, click, 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 click. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like the most invaluable thing for mixing and, and, and making music. Like there's so many different ways to apply using keybinds like that. 
Um, I literally use it every single second that I'm working on music. So, and I don't know what I did until I found out about that. Cause I wasn't doing that until recently, like maybe the last year or two. Um, so yeah. Is there something crazier I could do to this? All right, let's try something really weird. Um, do, 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 frequency shifter. That sounds like a really cool dubstep wobble, but I don't think it's what we want right now. No, it's not at all. Those sound like the same note, right? That's, that's more like what we're looking for, actually. Thank you for the three bucks. Um, if you want to send me music, honestly, the best way to do it is uh, um, either jawsofficial at gmail.com or promos at heybitethis.com because my wife, Joanne, literally makes me listen to every single demo that we get. Um, or just hop on Discord and uh, send me a DM on Discord right now and just say you were the dude on Twitch. And uh, I'll I'll get to it. I got you. You don't have to spend your hard-earned three dollars on me to get me to listen to your music. Toss one of the vocal EQ shape on it. I could do that. I hate those though. It might work though. Or I have this guy. Formant filter. Now we're getting into real, real look shit. Real look. Wait, what the? Fuck. Now we're getting into real look territory. My guys. Okay, so I'm going to go ham on this. You ready? So I'm going to make a macro that controls the X and the Y at the same time. And I should probably open this up so that I can see what I'm doing. So I want 
this to start up here and that to start there. No, that's going into no man's land. What about this? Ooh, nice. Big nice. Ooh. Ooh. That's a big nice. For my for my gamer homies in here. You know about the big nice. Um and now I'm gonna do my favorite thing about Ableton. Ableton 10, that is. I'm gonna insert a shape. Or let's see what happens if I do this. That's crazy. What if I just did one block? It like sounds like it's off time. No, I think it should just be like one steady. Yeah, that's tight. The simplest shapes are always the best shapes. And then I could probably change these to like the reverse, maybe. Like that. And then this one, maybe I'll just have it go like that. I think if you're going to end it like that, you might as well just tempo fade it. You know what I mean? What is happening? Okay. Mixer, song tempo. And just go from 140. So I would probably duplicate this. Um, oh, probably something important to tell you guys. If you highlight a segment of your song and you do shift Apple D and honestly, I don't know what it would be on windows, but I'm going to assume it's control shift, control shift D, whatever, either way. That's duplicate time, which means it will duplicate whatever amount of the track that you want to duplicate. It duplicates the entire thing. So let me do that again where you can see, excuse me, the whole song, right? So I'm just highlighting these two MIDI clips, right? But if I do shift Apple D, it duplicates everything around it. And if you don't have automation lock on, it'll duplicate all of your automation too, which you'll see here. Um, so what I was saying is you let eight bars of that go, and then you start the tempo transition to nothing.
And then you could like pitch it down and do a bunch of, you know, whatever crazy stuff. All right, cool. Uh, I mean, this song really didn't need that much. It sounds really good, and I feel like you know what you're doing. Um, I just wanted to, you know, change it up a little bit, put a little sauce on it, <coughs> not die in the process. Um, I feel like I've touched on a lot of cool, like, tips and tricks in this, so I'm going to call it a day on this one. Bet for DR from Jaws with love. And then let me freeze. <clears throat> Damn, is Jake in here? Does he read chat? Does he read? Shut up, Jake. Um, everyone say hi to Grenader Jake. Funny story about Jake. He's a professional Twitch streamer by trade. Um, however, Jake and I um went to high school together and i think we went to middle school together did we i can't remember either way um i grew up in the early stages of my life playing a lot of halo 2 with jake and we used to make uh what do we used to do like we used to make uh super bounce super bounce montages um Super Bounce Halo 2 montages, if you're older enough, or if you're old enough to remember Halo 2 and the montages on YouTube that came with it. Um, and, I mean, I still play video games, you know, but, like, I never really turned it into a career, and then all of a sudden I saw Jake after we were in college and stuff, and, like, he's... Uh, oh, yeah, you did go to MCDS, that's right. Um... Uh... And all of a sudden, here's Jake playing Destiny 2 for a living every day of his life. And uh, it was super motivating, and now here I am on Twitch. And I'm not going to say that it was uh, Jake who motivated me to do it, but maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. You never know. Uh, Destiny 2, huge release tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I already poured it over to Steam. Are you going to be on PC? If you're going to stream on PC, I'll, I'll come, I'll come hang out. But I mean, like I literally suck so much at destiny. So like, you're going to have to help me out. I know that's what you do best. Uh, did I, uh, buh, 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 buh. let's freeze this. Finally, Jake's on PC. I remember when I came and hung out with you in, uh, in Portland and it took you forever to try to figure out how to open overwatch on your on pc um i went to um wait is flick fl wait so this project that i've been working on the whole time is from a dude who grew up where i went to school um i went to uh, what did I go to? I went to MVMS, Mill Valley Middle School, and then I went to Tam High. But I had a lot of friends who lived in San Rafael. Um, did I go to a music production school? Yes. If you Google, if you Google, Google, am I saying the word Google right? <laughs> if you Google Icon Collective, um you will uh you'll find a lot about the music school i went to probably from me wow how's everyone in the chat no no soul food 
Soul food is my favorite restaurant on the planet. Earth. Yeah, I used to go to that one in uh, San Rafael pretty much every day of the week until it opened up in La Valley. Um, I had a lot of friends who went to Drake. Um, also, by the way, congratulations for making a project this put together uh, and professional sounding. Um, and you're you're still in high school. My music did not sound this good when I was in high school. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Much appreciate. All right, cool. I'm gonna pack this one up. Oh, you're not in high school. Just kidding. Ha! You went to Drake. Okay, my bad. Uh, okay. Do I have time for another one? Uh, yes, Germany and Canada are both local. And London. Uh, yeah. Flixed X locked. Um, I'm gonna send this project straight over to you in Marin. I'm, a, I'm gonna leave it on a USB at Soul Food. You can go pick it up in a couple days. Uh, but yeah, to, to recap, uh, song was already well put together. Um, drop was a little aggressive, which I didn't help with much, but I did do some cool EQing stuff to make sure that the hats stuck out. And then I did all that weird stuff on this, uh, on this sub bass saw kind of jammer, wherever it is. Where's it at? So yeah, I hope you guys learned something from that. Let's do one more. I'm going to do one more quick before I got to go. Um, nice. Collect all and save. And then let's quit out of here and generate ourselves another project. Gonna close my eyes and keep clicking and eventually I will open. Three. Alright, who's number three? Alex B? Is Alex B in the chat room? Oh wait. I've been doing these all one number off. Cause number one is timestamp. Oh man, that sucks. But whatever, I'm just gonna keep running with it. Number three, Alex B. Is Alex B in the chat? Alex B. B. Alex B. Oh. Oof. Woof. That was rough. All right, I'm gonna give Alex B. Thirty more seconds. I need to I need to have uh, VBI make me a custom timer so that uh I can like hit like a 30 second timer for people to respond. But in the meantime, what's the most recent production trick slash sound design technique you've learned that you've been excited about? Uh probably that thing I did on that track where I did the erosion and then um the saturator afterwards because there's a lot of sounds that i use that are super super low endy that uh <clears throat> that what am i trying to say uh they have like a lot of like low mids but they don't have enough highs um and using the erosion and then the saturator can really like completely change a sound and make it feel like you're taking off a filter almost uh thoughts on no mana uh, he's tight. He's cool. That's about it. I don't have any strong opinions. Either way. Uh, who are you most excited to collab with? 
Hold on, please. Um, who is I most excited? Uh, thanks for the Twitch Prime, Berserk. Berserk Overwatch. Unfortunately, today I'm not streaming Overwatch, and that's actually probably for the best because I suck at Overwatch, but that's okay. Um, who am I? Who was I most excited to collab with on a song that I did? Um, I mean, probably Skrillex, right? I mean, there's not, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that probably has to be it. Uh, no mana and IO were at day trip yesterday. Yeah, they were. I don't know where I was. Probably somewhere way cooler. Um, okay. I think the time is up. It's time for another number. Six. Sous -vide music. Is Suvi music in the building? Suvi music. Yeah, Jake, I'm going to hit you up tomorrow about Destiny. You could have gave me that Twitch Prime, Jake. Could have gave me that Twitch Prime. You hate to see it. Set the range 1 to 42. Oh. Oh, man. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, Steve. Yeah. Uh, whoever just pointed that out, that it was only 1 through 10, is really smart. Yeah. RIP and F in the chat. Yeah. 2 to, two to 42. Or let's see. So two to forty five. Two to forty five. Twelve. <clears throat> Serotonin in the chat. Uh, Serotonin. Same. Okay, this is going to be a five second countdown. Serotonin, last chance. Five, four, three, two. Click. 11? Are you kidding me? How do I say this name? Does anyone, can anyone read that? T Kirk HD. T Kirk HD. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Whichever birthday party that is. There's two different birthday parties, but they both just are called birthday party. All right. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> oh, T Kirk six nine to Kirk cheese six nine. Uh, okay, seventeen. Beat melter. Beat Melter, Beat Melter, please. If one of these people... Oh. All right, last chance, and then I'm going to open up one of the birthday party ones. Since they're number three in lead for bits.
K's. K A Y S. K's. K's. Anyone? <laughs> oh, wow. The Queso comments were quick. Case. Queso. Ha. <laughs> I mean, the lucky thing is for these people, if they, they realize that they messed up and they have to be on stream, they can always come in again because it's not like their submissions are going anywhere. Um, but I guess we're doing birthday party, Brian. Five hundred and twelve megabytes? What are you doing to me? Wow, look at that. Birthday party or the uh the by far favorite of the chat. I think more people in chat are excited about birthday party being here than me. He just dropped that. Fat virus on your PC, Elmao forehead. Right. Someone confirm I'll be able to rewatch the rest of this stream in a few hours when I wake up. Yes, you will. Um, all the all the demo roulette streams will be vods on Twitch, and then we're also cutting them up and putting them on YouTube so that you can check them out. <clears throat> are there any questions that i missed i know there's some of you a lot of you guys in here that do have projects um and i promise we will get to them um if this happens again where i i roll onto a, a couple people that uh, aren't in the chat, then I'll let one of you guys, like I did with birthday party. I just did birthday party because I know they're here. They're always in the chat. They're always in the Discord. They're always being supportive. And like I leaked last week, they have a record coming out on the label. Real soon. Favorite pizza roll filling. Um, pizza, man, I haven't had a pizza roll in forever. But probably bacon or pepperoni. Well, not that soon, but it's coming. It's coming. What do I love most about my headbanger family? Do I have a headbanger family? If I do, I love them because they ride the rail way better than I do. Okay. Convolution reverb. Interesting. Favorite Apex Legends character? I haven't played Apex since it first came out. Um, so, I don't know. I was the girl who could heal people. Uh, play Power Trip one time, please. No, I never will. It sounds so bad on a, li on a system. It sounds so bad. I can't do it. Why was Diplo whining about Baby Shark? Because he's Diplo. And Baby Shark is super cheesy. And Diplo hates things that are cheesy, but... He still loves me, and I still love him, and it's okay. I had a three-week neck problem after your show in Ottawa this summer. Back-to-back -back with Zed's dead. I apologize. Uh, but that's what happens. 
should play the new update that comes out tomorrow when you get the chance honestly tomorrow i'm probably gonna play destiny because it finally patches over tomorrow to steam and that's pretty exciting all right this better be a good one birthday party you have a lot riding on this uh by the way yes odd mob is way too underrated and he is a genius um his favorite record of mine is probably Sunriser that just came out. Um, it's so good. Uh, also, if you didn't know, my track with DJ Snake, Gassed Up, actually samples. Uh, it was originally like a remix for Odd Mob. Um, it was like an edit of a track he did, I think called Gassed Up. Um, and I just liked that sample so much and I ended up turning it into a full track with Snake and he was cool enough to let us use it as like an original song and like sample his song. So shout out to Odd Mob. He is definitely a genius. Holy clap. Is that loud enough for you guys? It just sounds like it's clipping. Holy Christ on a cracker. Do you guys just mix everything super low? Or why is the maximizer? Yeah, okay. I like how much Ableton stock you use. Where are the where's the drop even coming from? Where is it? Where is that boy? So I'm guessing that it's sampled from an analog synth, yeah. What synth? Yeah, okay. So... This is exactly what I was talking about when someone asked a question about what my favorite trick is. This is why I love the erosion trick, because this is what it sounds like with no processing. And then you turn on the hiss and the trash. Did you guys already know how to do that? Or did you, did you do this after the last stream where I did this? I thought I was the only one who knew this, other than 
Denmo. I thought I was a genius. Wait. What? The heck? That's also a very inventive way to do a tape stop. I like that. Um... So it sounds like there's already some white noise in the synth, and like the the erosion isn't even doing anything. I think that this OTT could be messed with a little bit. That's aggressive. Interesting. Wow, so the OTT is really doing a lot there. Oh, it's the amp. Oh, you guys are fancy. You use the dynamics control and everything? You're not even using the distortion. You what? Well, let's see if I do it my way, how it sounds. I don't know, is that better or is this better? I can't decide. Interesting. Another song where all the low end is coming from the one main synth. Um, I almost want to just take all of this stuff. And put that into a group and then create another chain. And then just go like this. And then go like this.
and now at least the sub is like separated so it's like now all the stuff that's getting crushed and distorted is just like most of the high-end information and i rolled off most of the sub and then the sub is sitting here and with that i'll distort it but in a way that feels nice for a sub yeah there we go and then let's get a little bit of this whoa so basically what i'm doing right now um to make the sub kind of like still feel strong against the rest of the synth. It sounded like this before, right? But if we can control the sub on its own, then we're going to be in a much better place. So I filtered off everything from 91, 92 hertz and below. And then this is a trick that I actually funnily enough learned on the Icon Collective Twitter like two years ago that you take a, a saturator and you put it on hard curve which like sounds like this way too aggressive but then if you take the drive down minus 10 or minus 11 it gives it this really nice just like clean warm sound and then the the um, L2 maximizer limiter is on here for two reasons. One, um, it's making the, the, the signal mono, which I like. And two, it's just kind of controlling the peaks. And like, when you have a sub note that does, or a sub line that does different notes, some notes hit harder than other notes do. And so the, the limiter just kind of helps bring all those different notes to like a, a very like, uh, you know, common level so that there's not one note that's like hitting way, way less than the rest. Uh, and it's catching those like crazy peaks. I think that sounds better. I can't really tell. But now I can go up here and I could take that amp and turn it to dual instead of mono. And that just gives it a little bit more width, which it's not that wide, but it probably could use it. I like that phaser sound on there, which looks like it's coming straight from Serum, which is pretty tight. This is why I hate the amp sometimes. It makes everything so bright. That's cool. Um, 
was I gonna say? Uh, there's a little like level adjustment stuff that needs to go on like all this stuff sounds pretty decent and then all of a sudden this giant bass thing comes in and it's like oh. yeah this thing is very much loud What I would do here instead of just putting it on 20% is just make a chain like that. Then this could probably use some more filtering. Because then instead of like pushing the sound back a little bit, you're getting that same tonality, but it like wraps around the sound. If that makes sense. And why won't this EQ go on here? It just doesn't want to play. What is the deal? Please? Just go. What in the heck? That was ridiculous. I think this is also another case where the hats are getting muffled. There's also just not much going on in the hats. But I'm going to do that same thing from the last project. So that's like the money spot for the hat. So then I'm just going to drag that right there. Go like that. It's probably going to affect this space a lot. So it's not as pronounced in this one because the hat's a lot lower and the bass is a lot louder, but you still can like very gently hear the hat come back into the mix. And I actually kind of like that scoop on this, on this synth. Okay, I don't like that scoop on this. You know what the other thing I want to check? 
Okay, cool. It's hitting at F0. So let's clean this up a little bit. I think start this on F sharp instead. So what was that? C sharp. So D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp. This thing is pretty aggressive. I don't even know how I would go about dialing in all of those, so I'm just going to do... one of these. That helps a lot. So that one needs to come up. What's that funk? What's that funk? Then that vocal is super loud. What's that funk? What's that funk? What's that funk? What's that funk? So you're starting to be able to hear everything a little bit more in the mix. Um, I'm sorry, birthday party boys, but I'm probably going to use some uh, plugins that you don't have right now. But uh, I know you guys, so you just have to go download them. Uh, this one's called Animate. I just found it the other day. It's from this guy called, uh, what's it called? Mastering the Mix. This thing is super cool. It does a bunch of different stuff. There's lots of cool videos of it on the internet, but, um, let's go to drums, <sighs> bigger snare. Well, that did the job, but the important thing here is if you look at this, uh, output meter, there's a little arrow right here. And that's where the plugin is telling you that you need to turn the gain down to for it not to be way louder than it was and to see if the effect actually makes sense. And for some reason it won't let me do that, so I'm just going to drag it down like that.
kind of like what it's doing, but I kind of don't. Whoa. So this is basically just getting the clap part. And expanding on that. Okay, that sounds better. But that's probably just louder. You can definitely hear it in the mix now. Um, so now I'm going to put on my favorite little reverb and give it a nice little ambient reverb, EDM snare, ambiance. What about that? Um, putting really tiny reverbs on stuff like snares is something you really don't think about but it really changes how they sound. And you're gonna see right now. Honestly, really don't like that snare. I think I think this whole situation could be fixed with a better snare, but we'll get there. Um, while I'm here, though, I do want to put a reverb on these guys and make them sound gnarly. Let's do this. That's like, I feel like whenever I do fills with toms and stuff, that reverb is what it's missing. There's something about the pitch bend of that high thing in the vinyl that's really putting me through a loop. It like sounds out of key with the song even though it's not really. Honestly, like this, without um, without that and just the 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 high string, it sounds kind of sick. That's actually sick. That's way better. Less is more, man. Uh, and honestly, you guys have the old project, so you can put this in if you want, but I'm just going to go for it and uh, go full YOLO, full yeet. I can feel the energy. 
No, this doesn't need cords. It doesn't need anything. Yep, straight into the buildup. That's way better. And then it just needs more snareses, honestly. And then we could like filter them. Because now you can hear the snare. So now you want to make it not heard. Kinda just want that before the drop. What's that for? Something like that. Just like a big build up and then nothing and then vocal. What's that for? I think this guy needs to be compressed. So now you can bring it down and it's not the the decay isn't making it too quiet. Mixing is really just about levels. It's really just about moving around the gain until everything sounds good. Okay, so... Um, I have to ask you, birthday party boys, because I feel like you do the same thing that I do. Um, have you been mixing this thing with ozone on? Because with ozone on, a lot of these choices in how the levels are set, um, <laughs> uh, if you guys are a Jaws ripoff, you're just a ripoff of someone else. Cause I'm just a ripoff of AC Slater or something. Um, okay. But serious question. If you've been mixing with ozone on, then a lot of the level choices that you've been doing make sense. Because when I turn on ozone now, everything's all screwy. But when I turn it off, all the levels are all over the place. It was a rough shot, but yep, okay. So something that I've started doing recently um, that's super important is 
when I'm working on an idea, I'll throw a mastering chain on, I'll get excited about it, make it sound good. But then when I go back to really mix it, you have to take your mastering chain off and you have to get the mix right before you put the master back on. I literally, before I did demo roulette today, the reason that it was a little late and I did it at seven instead of five is because I had to finish a song today that's coming out um, really soon. Spoiler alert. Um, like really, really soon. Um, master outside of the DAW. No, don't master outside of the DAW. That's fine. You don't need to master outside of the DAW. No one cares. Um, can I tease it? <sighs> no, not yet. Um, but, uh, anyways, um, I could not figure out the mix down on that song for literally ever. And it was driving me insane. And I had to take off my master. I went through three different mastering chains and, uh, it was finally when I deleted the last one and remixed the whole thing basically from the ground up with no mastering chain on and then went on and built out a custom master just for that song um, that it finally worked. But I also always work and a lot of times mix with a master on because otherwise it doesn't sound exciting. So I totally understand. But for now, we're leaving it off. Okay, so I need to take out, I need to do the EQing over here is what I need to do. I feel like what you guys were cutting out was kind of like a lot of like the... That was like a lot of the weight of the sound. And I know that like the 230 to 260 uh, hertz is like the normal muddy zone. And it's normally where, you know, people tell you to cut out of your sounds. But it literally takes away all the energy from the sound. So I'm going to leave it in. Oh boy, a whole new synth. Oh boy, here we go. Also, that should be the vocal for the drop. 100%. So now I took out those cuts that you guys did. So I'm going to go in and make a bunch of cuts before all of this distortion and compression. Um, so what you do is you EQ all the bad stuff out first, and then you do all the compression and saturation and just completely destroy the sound and then do some cuts again. Moving, moving through me. Whoa. 
What the tits? Holy moly. Oh, I get it. It's literally, okay, so what was just happening is it was taking just whatever I was soloing and putting it through all of that distortion. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so let's turn that off for a sec. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do all the EQing at the end. Because I'm a lazy boy. Also, I need to solo this. There we go. Make it a bell, you dummy. Interesting. Uh, you guys have your side. I think what you meant to do is put that side chain in there. I think that'll sound a little bit better. And then let's turn on the high end. Honestly, I don't even know if you need to split this high and low. I'm just going to I'm just going to do this. And I feel like 
It just needs a bunch of hats to make it feel bigger. But that's just me. I feel like we're making some progress though. You really didn't need all those samples. Okay. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's put a high pass like that. And automate that down. And then the one thing that will help this uh this base like still uh be present when it's filtering up is you just add a little bit of resonance as it's going up Moving through me. And I know that the bass feels super like weird and bouncy right now, but with a bunch of hats uh, and like percussion and stuff, I think it'll sound way better. Something like that, I don't know. Wait, I'm so dumb. Why don't I just use whatever this is? Macro 2? That's what we should be doing right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I have to put another drum thing in here before I go crazy. Oh, my back hurts. How do people stream for like 20 hours at a time? I don't get it. Let's do...
Let's see about this. That's kind of the right vibe, but it, I don't like that sound. Well, that's the fill we needed. What the heck? Oh my god. And then maybe it just needs a crash. Let's see if that works. Nope, not the vibe. Mm. That might be the one. Now I like that other one. This is what I do on a daily basis. Now I now I feel the groove. Now I feel it. For sure. I want to see if I can do something about this vocal. Let's 
and feel the air. Crazily enough, there's this preset Ableton rack I found. And I think it'll really do the trick right here. But I gotta turn off the reverb and the delay. I can feel the energy. I can feel the energy. I can feel. I can feel the energy. I can feel. Maybe even the doubler. Where is it? I can, I can, I can, I can feel the energy. So then I take that and make that a thing. I can see, I can feel the energy. Oh yeah. We're getting somewhere now. Um, and then... Gonna go back to this. Oh. And I think it just needs like a smaller something like this. No, that's even too big and like dark. Let's do vocal to mix glue. That seems to work. Yeah. I can feel the energy. Moving through me. Through me. Through me. Also, the timing of that last through me is. Maybe just like an auto the volume automation. Got to do something about that fill. Are you talking? Are you talking crap about the fill that I put in your song birthday party? I think it's great. Okay, I think it's I think it's wonderful. You know what? It's just about 10 o'clock and I feel like I've done a lot here and I know you guys are great producers and you'll take this to the next level and I think I'm done. I think I've had enough. Oh my gosh, just in time. Look at who it is.
Come on, say hello to everybody. Hi. Just in time for Daddy to be done with this stream. You ready to go eat? Ready to go hang out and watch TV? Yeah, you are. All right, well, that's it for uh, round two of Demo Roulette. Shout out to uh, Birthday Party and the homie from back home in Marin, whose songs I went through tonight. I hope you guys learned a bunch. Uh, maybe we'll do one next week. I don't know. If I'm around, maybe we'll do it. Um, Jared, you're definitely not coming over. I'm going to hang out with my wife and uh, watch TV. And I hope everyone has a good night. And uh, make sure you turn in for the uh, next one. And if you just got here, the VOD should be up sometime tomorrow morning. And you can go through and uh, learn a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll get you guys, all four of you guys, your projects um, tomorrow morning. Uh, until next time. Peace out.